Good evening and welcome to our Artists Looking at Art series where we bring in artists and their work from the region. Um, and we've been doing this for, you know, honestly, I don't know how many years, but this year we took a look uh, within and decided to select artists who happen to be McNay staff. Um, and so today, um, by the way, I'm Jackie Edwards, I'm the assistant curator here at the McNay. And today I'm here with Mario Perez, one of our preparer preparators. Mm -hmm. So welcome, hey. Mario. Hey. <laughs> Uh, so before we get into talking about and looking at your art, I'd like for you to just for a moment um, explain to everyone what you do here at the McNeil. I'm so glad you asked me that question. <laughs> I, I, I have like the best job here. It's not the highest pain or the lowest pain. It's not the hardest. Probably the gardeners are the hardest. But as a preparator, art handler, um, I handle the art from the very beginning. All the trucks come in. We get to open up the crates and pull them out and put them on walls and fix the shows. And, and um, it's just really excited. And you know, <clears throat> before, when I was getting ready for this and looking for old pictures to show, I found this, this um, it was like a college assessment test that I took mm -hmm. back in. 83 or something like that. Like what and it was you would like, do for a career? Yeah, it okay. was desired career, was graphic designer slash museum worker. And what? I've always I've always <laughs> wanted to work in a museum and only until I came to San Antonio did it, did it all started happening and I worked at Art Pace and then Salma and the Witty and now here and yeah, I love what I do, so. Yeah. Great. Well, and we are grateful to have you and your fellow preparators here at the McNay. We have the best team here at the McNay, if I don't say so myself. Um, but let's now get into looking at some of your art. Cool. And if possible, I'd like to go back as far as you'd like to oh, and talk about yeah. some of your beginnings, give people some okay. context for your work and maybe what we see, right. what we'll see outside. So somehow <clears throat> through all the slides we go to, I guess it's going to relate to what you see outside. Somewhat, so you'll see what I do. But yeah, that, I'm glad you said we'll go way back because um, I'm 50 and I've been showing art a long time. I had my first show was in 88, I think I was 21 years old. And I used to do a lot of drawings. Um, and they've always kinda, you know, it's like if you, if you grab the book of Mark Rothko's career and you flip through it, it would be like a flip book and you see his paintings just kinda change but it's kind of always been the same. Mm -hmm. There's always been change, Through but line. there's always been the same. And at least for me, that's, that's what I admire. You work at one thing and you're either kind of obsessed by it or, mm -hmm. or yeah, obsessed by it. And mm. you do that all your life, so you've kind of had the same vision. So, yeah, I'm gonna show, and all these people haven't seen like these super early works, but they're kind of the same. So here we go. This is like, so this is stuff from like 88. I started doing drawings. I used to love to draw. <clears throat> I love drawings and um, um, the drawings I did, I, I, I guess these, this was, these were like 87, 88 and you know Basquiat had just died, he was still alive. So this was kind of the 80s thing going on mm -hmm. and um, um, and so you were 21 around yeah. this time. Mm -hmm. Had you been in art school? Had you not really um, done that? Was it only to, a personal yeah. thing? I went to like a commercial art school okay. for two years and then kind of dabbled in college and never finished. But I just started doing my art and having shows at the time. Mm -hmm. But I guess these drawings, and I'm, I'm just, I'll click through a few. We can go back or whatever. So the drawings I did were always like... Um, I, I like to think of they're like dichotomies. They're two things because, you know, I'm from the valley. I'm from the border. We speak Spanish and English. And and my father was in the Air Force, so um, we lived all over the world. Well, not all over the Philippines, mm -hmm. in California, and Texas. And so, if Dad was in Vietnam or whatever, we came back to the valley. And he retired when I was like 10 years old. So I went back to the valley. So I had that, and it's the region down there is very different than here, you know, than Hispanics or Tex-Mex people up here, and that it's very distinct. It's, you know, people speak Spanish or they speak English, 
And, um, and, and don't get me wrong, I love the culture here and, and you know, the Spanglish that we speak, and there's Spanglish over there, but it's really, I would just say they're really distinct things, okay. you know, and it's more, it's probably less Spanglish and more fluent Spanish. So to me, when, you know, when I started drawing, I, I just thought of Spanish as like the old school, my parents, my grandparents, and like the English side or American side was like the modern, mm -hmm. you know, we okay. went to college or we graduated high school. I so see. those were these two things. So I did these, these naive drawings with these kind of like, you know, modern kind of uh, compositions. And, and at this point, were you in the Valley? Were you in San Antonio? No, or I was in Houston. You were in Houston. Yeah, okay. I moved to Houston in 84 after high school. Okay. And um, so, um, And we yeah. see the sort of introduction of language here, mm -hmm. which continues or makes appearances throughout your yeah, work. Can you talk about and, that? You know, like, well, like, so those meats out there, they're pretty much mostly Spanish or English, mm -hmm. but never mixed. Mm -hmm. And I'll just kind of gonna get on the line of something and um, just kind of go with it until I exhaust this series or a group of things. Mm -hmm. So like these were just from a fashion magazine. And, and also another thing you should know about me is that I take from everything. I'm not a, I never did a life drawing. I mean, I did it in school, but I, I like appropriating and copying stuff okay. like all the time. So like these were from my mother's, she had those little novellas, mm -hmm. you know, these drama and, and, and um, so I just took the, the figures from there and kind of made them about being Mexican, being Mexican American and you know, so it's like machismo and, and, and kind of race or what I thought about race and I was young and thinking about a lot of things. Yeah. But anyways. Um, so that's where those guys came from. Great. And then they kind of morphed into sometimes without words into just these little naive things and these spooky backgrounds, still kind of painting naively, mm -hmm. or I mean, I'm sorry, painting modern contemporary stuff that would, you know, I don't know, Yves Klein or, you know, anything mm -hmm. you would see in a, in a modern canvas at the time with these little naive guys kind of lost in it or a part of it at And the so same were you time. continually looking back at art historical examples and sort of borrowing from those? Or was there a so. period where you kind of shut you know, that? I, I looked a lot at, at American painting because mm -hmm. that's what I've always liked. I, that's, I think I'm, I'm an American painter. That's if anybody asks you, what are you? What kind of, I'm an American painter. Mm -hmm. I write some Spanish words, but I'm definitely an American painter. And yeah. just through my experiences, that you know, we'll go through some of these, and um, that's just kind of what I've arrived to, what I think I am, you know. So that was the drawing part. We just got that out of the way. Um, coming up next, uh, so, and um, I'd always traveled to Mexico because mm -hmm. we lived on the border. Okay. My mother, we never went to Astro World. She always took us to Mexico. We'd gone everywhere. So by the time I moved out on my own. I just kept doing it, just had a habit. Mm -hmm. And I love it, it's cheap, it's, you know, it's beautiful, it's Mexico, so. Um, and when you were growing up, what would you do in Mexico? Just Oh, just, tur just be tourists, tourists? Okay. yeah. You know, mom would seek out, we went to some cool rivers and waterfalls or churches and, and um, you know, just be a super tourist. Mm -hmm. um, and we had gone, to, I think the first time, we went to Mexico City was in like 78 or something like that and I just loved it. I love Mexico City and I, I so I wanted to live there. Um, uh, so I just kept thinking about it and and in 94 I was working at Whole Foods in Houston okay. and I just sold all my stuff. I was like 27 years old which you can do when you're 27 mm -hmm. years old, right? Just sell it all and, and um, I had friends in Mexico City, some artists that I had actually shown with and I went to Mexico City and um, I actually, I stayed with a good friend, Tommy Glassford, who's from Laredo and he's, he's still living there. He's done really well for himself so you can Google that, Tommy Glassford. Um, stayed with Tommy and met other artists and um, I just kind of soaked it up. I, I walked the streets every day, I took pictures of um, 
these guys, the uh, rotulistas, the hand sign painters, I just loved it. I just obsessed with it. And mm -hmm. that's all I would do all day. And I'd go and eat and I'd walk around and think about it. I did some drawings, I did some paintings. Um, but it was just like a gold mine for me. Um, here is this, an example. I started noticing these buses and it's called uh, Ruta 100, uh, Route 100. And it just went up and down Reforma, which is a big uh, street. Mm -hmm. And on the back they had like these, um, these Bob Ross looking <laughs> landscapes. And I just loved them, I just loved them. They're the same kind of colors, they all use the same that little can is Comex, so it's their little one shot. Uh -huh. And all the sign painters use that. And so I, I, I stood on the side of the street with my camera, waiting for these buses for weeks, just obsessing. I mean, I had nothing else to do. And what was it about these paintings that captured your attention? They're simple, they're colors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at my drawings, they weren't like, perfect so I was like these aren't perfect but they're just like really attractive to me and also like being in that city I, I just looked at these with the vents and they're kind of polluted landscapes mm -hmm. they kind of spoke to me you know and that's kind of how it is still now if you see a sign there's something curious about it or it, they speak to you in a way whether it's the font or if it's something's fallen down or there's just something wrong with it and so anyways, so yeah, these were really beautiful. And so I took, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 of them. Um, and do the scenes correspond to actual places in Mexico? Or are they just so. from the imaginations of the artist? They're just magical, made up things, I guess. So people that are on the bus, you know, it goes, you know, when the bus leaves, it's like this big thing yeah, of, right. of smog <laughs> leaves yeah. and then you can see this pretty landscape and then it's Dichotomies. not so bad. Yes. So out of these, so what I'm going to show you in the next couple slides are things that I saw and took pictures of and then things that I, that I really appropriated. So these came out of those okay. and there are these, this is like four by six feet on aluminum. Um, Actually, this is in Sama's permanent collection, my only museum permanent collection. They bought it in 96, I believe, when uh, Don Bacigalupi was their curator. I think he's a, he's a director somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. Um, so these came out of them, and I don't know how or what, but like it's kind of from, from my drawings where there were two, two things, one naive, one modern, they, I just got the idea to make these things stick out, you know. I, mm -hmm. I call them my bullseyes, the clean letters, whatever they are. And it's just an old trick in painting in that there it show it throws something into the back, you know. And it's sort of interesting that the the landscape there is sort of splotchy and painterly, but the words are very right. crisp. Exactly. And so yeah, so I mean that was intentional and I mean, I, I painted the landscape and then I went with a sander to take it off. That was the technique. And then I came back in with enamel and then that. And by the way, that's, that's my dad's name and it means incarnation. So it's kind of like a, a, something being born mm -hmm. out of something old or that'll always be there. So I did that one and I did several of these, but I'm just gonna show you the ones that people actually own. So there's two of them. Um, <laughs> Jerry Gore bought this. He's a local guy, he buys a lot of art. So then he bought this one and I think I thought this worked really well. And with the idea of these of those bullseyes that I do that mm -hmm. are always solid and they're always there. In a way, it, it's kind of honest that I'm showing you this trick. It's just a trick, because painting is all a trick, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just a here and now and, and it, it's always gonna be here and now. It's always gonna be solid. Um, so that was that guy. Uh, another thing I kind of chase after were these doors, and I'd go out on Sundays. I bought a bike there, mm -hmm. like a like a a, um, a baker's bike. Mm -hmm. It was this huge, heavy black bike, and I would just drive around with my camera and take pictures of these cool doors. They they just reminded me of like Rothko's or something like that. You know, everything would be closed, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them or how how I'd make them to a painting without making them doors. Um, 
And um, and so you were drawn to the colors, the absolutely, words yeah. that were Sure, sort just the colors, and on. they're kind of quiet to me. Mm -hmm. You know, with the doors closed, the, the streets were, were quiet. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there. Um, but they kind of left a message for whoever was there on a, on a day that everything was closed. Um, so I'd found this guy. This was actually just for a, a bookstore. And I really love this logo, Tecnico y Científico. So they sold technology and science books there. Mm -hmm. And kind of, um, I just thought of it as just this polluted door in a polluted city. And, and um, so I made this painting out of it. And, um, just more bullseyes back and forth and just trying to be a painter about it. Um, this is, is about 70 by 80. And is that surface all painted or is that on wood? Yeah, no, this is a canvas. Actually, when I was there, my friends, they were like, let's go buy some canvas. And I, I don't remember where it was, but we bought, it wasn't even an art supply store. I think it was a fabric store and it's this real thin canvas. And then we went to some, it, I don't know what it was. We bought chalk and we made our own gesso. I don't, I don't even remember how it was we did it, but I did several paintings like this. So it's just on canvas, and that's all oil and with the enamel on the background. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's just, I, you know, that door just kind of spoke to me in that it's almost like, granted that, you know, science has gotten us further, but I just think, you know, it's almost like the industrial age since we've discovered cars and everything. The earth is just kind of getting more and more polluted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking tree hugging or anything like that, but it's like kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. We're trying to go okay. forward. Mm -hmm. the population's growing and it's just, it's uh, kind of turns into a bigger problem sometimes. And so about when was this? What? What year? Oh, this was all 94 when 94, I was in Mexico when you were City. Still there. I painted this there. And how long were you in Mexico just living um, there on your own? About eight months or something okay. like that, nine okay. months. Yeah, I, had, I lived with Tommy for a while, and then some friends of his were leaving, and I sublet a place from theirs in this place. It's called Santa Catarina, St. Catherine. It's just a square, and there's a building there. And... Um, there's, I just actually saw one of the guys that I met there who's a writer, his name's Kurt Hollander. He's writing a book about, and it's called Los Artistas del Centro, Artists of the Centro. Mm -hmm. And between 93 and 98, you know, May was earlier than that, no, 91 and 98, that all these artists lived in the Centro and it happened to be in Santa Catarina. So I wasn't the only one. I just mm -hmm. kind of followed wherever I could find a place to live. and. Like um, people that are like really big deals, like uh, Francis Alice, mm -hmm. uh, Melanie Smith, uh, Tommy, um, Alejandro Diaz actually lived there as well. He's he's going to be in the book. Mm -hmm. But all those people, we all just hung out. Francis had a studio in Santa Catarina, and we'd go to lunch all the time. And I, I started seeing his name in the late '90s. I saw a piece of his at LACMA. I was like, oh mm -hmm. wow, that's Francis' piece. And now this dude's like big time. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, I, you know, now I kind of look back, I was like, wow, that was really a special time. I don't, um, I didn't get it. And I mm -hmm. just left. <laughs> or I couldn't hang, you know, I'm like a nine to five kind of guy. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't hustle. I don't know how they was did it. Was it sort of long days, long nights with um, them? Or, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those people, they're, they were good at the game, you know, and they, like Melanie Smith, she's English. And I don't know how they worked it. It was hard. Okay. But I had a good time. But you were there during this sort of yeah. important time. Sure, sure, you were, sure. You were sure, among sure. them. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to fast forward through just mid-career stuff just to okay. show you that I kind of kept painting my bullseyes. But okay. I'm not going to show you a lot of that, I promise. Um, oh, right. So this, this was the main outside. bullseye. <laughs> so this is why I put this there. This is I painted. I also painted this there in Mexico City. So, you know, like the technicals painting, everything was kind of under. So I'm just playing with it. I'm still a young guy, not really knowing. But um, this has always just kind of resonated, and 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 how I see painting, and just what I like or what I want to do, and 
I think it's still there. Even like the little meat paintings, they're on a white canvas, but it's like a dirty white canvas. Mm -hmm. Or the other painting that says Todo Cambia. It, I definitely painted something lighter on it, and then the, the lettering is just the clean bullseye part of it. So um, and this one is one of those that's hanging outside, which yeah. we'll all get to see when we're done with our conversation. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so talk a bit about the just this sort of singular letter and point, because the past um, ones had either landscape mm -hmm. or taking from right. from those doors. Was this also taken from a door or a sign, no, or is that this totally? No, this was taken from the side of a building, actually. Okay. And I don't know what it said. Maybe it was mechanicos or something like that. And I just, it's just like I said, that, you know, it kind of spoke to me. And I, I was like, I got the idea. You know, when they say, I'll meet you at 12 o'clock on the dot. That's it. And I was just like, S on the dot, S en punto, en punto. And I was like, oh, that's my dot. So it even reaffirms more my bullseye. That's it. This is what it is, you know. Definitive um, in many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is that, you know. Um, so that's what that, how that kind of happened. Great. Um, so yeah, and then after uh, I came back, I kind of just went back to Houston. And I did, I, I kept drawing and started painting a little more. Um, um, and um, yeah, just had a ton of shows. I just want to say like, I, at this point, it really, it's really trickled down because mm -hmm. you know, I've talked about it with some of my other friends and it's like you work all day, then you go home and then you got to make something worthwhile, right. or at least you try. And especially now, it's like, man, I got to get eight hours of sleep. Um, um, <laughs> I, you know, and I feel like my other artist friends and they have openings and stuff and on a Thursday or a Tuesday. And at this point, it's like, you got to be kidding, man. I just, and it's not personal. It's just like, I got to go sleep. I got to rest. I can't do it. So like the 90s were like, I was a young kid. I, I, I worked at Whole Foods from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. I was a grocery stalker. Then I'd come home, rest a little, and then start painting from 4 to midnight. Wow. I don't know how the hell I did that. Yeah. I have so no just, idea. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. But the 90s were good. And mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, with all my drawings, you know, got me into a lot of shows and stuff. I actually, was it uh, early 90s, I got an NEA, a huge NEA grant for five, five grand mm -hmm. just to do whatever you want. I don't think they kind of do those anymore. Mm -hmm. They knew they cut, they cut a lot of those really, I wouldn't say easy grants, but just like these freedom grants to do whatever the hell you want. And what did you do with it? Um, I bought a lot of material, mm -hmm. I went to Spain, I thought it was really weird, you know. <laughs> you thought I, Spain was weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so used to Mexico. I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to go to Spain, but it's like <laughs> okay. another world. Like yeah. culturally? It's, it's Europe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even the language was just really intimidating. Did you end up taking any sort of artistic inspiration from your time in Spain, or you were too weirded out? <sighs> mm. I mean, I, I did what I was supposed to. I went to the Reina Sofia. I went mm -hmm. to the to the to the Prado. Um, I saw the things I was supposed to see, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I I've just I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm already brainwashed and just just to the crudeness of our Tex-Mex and Mexico vision. But yeah, it was good. I haven't gone back since. Mm -hmm. If that's an answer. Well, it was weird. You know? So yeah. Where would you? So um, yeah. So the drawings were good to me and. Um, uh, I started playing with painting, so I kept going with these bullseyes, and they morphed into kind of these swampy, uh, puddly things with uh, bullseyes of different things. I did some birds, because birds are easy to paint, <laughs> okay. and I did moths and stuff like that. I just wanted to show this example, and I, I, I did a bunch of these, and then I've kind of gotten away from them, just for a personal reason of, I don't know. It was a it was a phase. Mm -hmm. Just the background painting. There'll always be bullseyes, but okay. just um, so you moved through it. Yeah, we kind of moved through it. So for a while, I, and then I cut off these little swamp paintings, and and I just did. Um, well, here's a reason as well. When I moved here from Houston, I had a garage full of like eight foot and six foot paintings, mm -hmm. like a ton of stuff. So. 
if you're not like moving all these things and they're not going anywhere, they're just, they're, they're your babies, you mm -hmm. know, so. You gotta take care of them. And so there's a lot of thinking, it's like, do I really want to make another six, eight foot paintings or? <sighs> I see. It's a lot to carry. Along with what you like to do, there's a, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta Balance. weigh it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so you came to San Antonio when? So I came to San Antonio in 03. Okay. Yeah, and I started painting more bullseyes just in smaller things. And this is my first meat painting mm -hmm. I painted just out of the, uh, again, I like to appropriate things. This was in like a, a meat market flyer, um, HEB flyer, and it was for a crown roast. Figure that. <laughs> so I just, and I saw crown roast, you know, just like the S on the dot. I was like, crown roast, hmm. Um, it made sense. And so you so said I this is this from a, a flyer, mm -hmm. and then others, um, you know, you said in Mexico you would go around and take photographs. Mm -hmm. Do you consistently work from photographs or reproductions of images? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely take from other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've never drawn anything, I mean, I did other than school. I've never made a painting from anything that's real life. So I started these guys, and they kind of made me happy. They were small, they're manageable, you can crank out a bunch of them. So here's some other bullseyes we'll, we'll do. I did a bunch of Magritte things Magritte. that were just like yeah. fired up. And I show this one. Most of them were, because Magritte's was, this is not a pipe. You know, mm -hmm. it's a painting kind of along this, these lines. So mine were like slick charlatan, compulsive liar, the kind of like, you know, art's a lie, don't believe it, it's right. just a painting, kind of right. along with these things. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went along that. Uh, so what's the title of this one? Is it fired, fired up? It's fired yeah. up. Um, and actually this, this guy and some of the other ones, they were um, kind of the reason I moved to San Antonio is Chuck Ramirez put me in Saladillas. I was in a show in Saladillas in, in 2002. And I showed a bunch of these and a bunch of these little tiny, tiny little drawings. Um, and Chuck bought this one. When they had a fire at Saladillas this past year, mm -hmm. Anjali Gupta like posted, I guess they took it from the ashes and it was all ashy. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's even better than what makes I sense. did. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, oh, why didn't I think of that? You know? <laughs> so we did the little Magritte things. Um, silver lining. And then um, I used these to paint some of the big swampy paintings. Okay. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do here? And I just got the idea to make kind of like several of these different birds, uh, these little bullseye birds with kind of positive little happy-go-lucky messages. And these were shown to Joan Grona mm -hmm. um, in 2006. And you know, I was, I was looking at my resume to see how long has it been since I've painted. Um, and this, there was a little solo show in the, in the back. I did like 40 of these. I did some knives, I did some meats, I did some birds, and I think that's it. But that was 2006, mm -hmm. and um, I think I was in a group show with her in 07, and then I did one show at Unit B in 2008, so it's like, wow, I haven't painted in like nine years. I can't believe that time really flies. So, and I had been meaning to paint since 2015, but you know, I was working on my house. I was like, 2015's the year. You were getting and then 2016 flew by. I was like, no, this is it. And I happened to start some things. And when Renee asked me, are you still doing work? I was like, By, actually, I am. <laughs> and so I kind of started where I left off. And mm -hmm. that's why I did meet. But they, they all have another message. So here's a few other of these bird things. This little, um, little dove and then um, white ring dove. Um, so yeah, what's next? Aha! So this is on the, we're on the down slope here, folks. <laughs> so um, yeah, I take a lot of pictures when I go to Mexico of everything. Um, and concerning the meats, you know, we, these, a lot of these butchers that you go into the, um, into the markets, it's almost humorous, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these guts and stuff hanging around and they got this little pig or they have this little dude and they're <laughs> ready to cut your meat up and then, and, and I eat meat. I'm not a vegetarian by no means, but it's like, wow, well, they're just gonna get ready to cut this animal up and they, they kinda like, it's kinda just cheery thing, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. 
And um, so it's, it's serious, but it's like, no, don't take it so serious. And like my little meat paintings, I, I think, you know, when I finish them, they kind of tickle me. They're kind of funny, right? Because they're small and cute. But I have, you know, all my messages are, are, are about temporary stuff and saying goodbye mm -hmm. in that essence. So, um, yeah, I love, I love it. This is kind of the vernacular on this is just so simple. And this place is kind of near the hotel that I stay at. And it's like nothing so fancy. All I got to say is carnitas. And this place at night and people is go. like that. Nice. Yeah, that's all you need. That's and all you got to say. This was on a recent trip. To Mexico. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been going a lot. Like the last 10 years, at least twice a year, three mm -hmm. times a year, if I can. I really should go somewhere else, but I always go to Mexico. <laughs> I can't. I, it's like I leave and I, there's stuff I never got to do. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. And the more people you meet, it's just like, oh, shoot. You know, it's like, man, there is just not enough time. So these are just kind of examples. And, you know, you kind of you read them and you kind of take a feeling from them however they are. And I like this font, so that's mm -hmm. why I kind of use them in my, um, my thing. So we're getting into the, aha, more rotulistas. So um, aside from being a commercial thing, so you see things like this is on the side. I didn't even take, a, take the chance to see what this business was because I'm walking through the streets and it's like I'm a pinball going everywhere so they're like you know and this site is protected by the organization love whatever person is surprised by this inside of here will be assigned to the authorities so it's like you know don't start any sh stuff stuff okay. um, and I just think it's pretty I like all the fonts just out of uh, they're just kind of preaching love here and I thought it was sweet um, That's great. oh this is this crazy uh, it's a it's a it's a bookstore and it has nothing to do with bugs. I've passed by there and I never really noticed it. And the last time I went, I was like, oh, it's metamorphosis. And that's what a small bug turns into a big bug. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's why they have the bugs. And I hadn't really stopped the, to notice it. I thought, that's just so weird. I love but that funny. they have the hand-painted signs, but then also a contact for email. Right. Yeah, so they're, 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 sort of they're, they're adding that. Dichotomy there. <laughs> yeah. And a little graffiti. <laughs> so I guess the next few things are just different styles of, and messages that you see from handwritten stuff on the walls. Oh, here's for a gymnasium. And I would totally, if I painted this, it would probably come out very close to this. That's why I kind of like it. Um, but it works, you know? So um, you, see, you see a lot of anger because Mexico has a lot of problems, mm -hmm. a lot of nautical problems. Uh, a lot of corruption problems mm -hmm. in the government. So, so I saw this and I took a picture. But it's huge, like the, the metal part is like the size of a person. So this, these, these things were like eight foot tall. Um, and it was like narco estado, it's narco state. Mm -hmm. Which is probably not far off the truth because, mm, you know, it's all connected. Mm. It's kind of, it kind of goes all connected. Um, and they really don't like their president. Okay. That's their president. It's the way Chingad is basically, I'm going to beat you up in not such a nice <laughs> word. There's a lot of, really a lot of good graffiti and a lot of good stencils in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And they're all very political. Mm -hmm. No more femi femicide. It's a lot of problem with that. Mm -hmm. There's their president again. Right. I just kind of like this guy. Um, and of course, the 43 students uh, that disappeared, disappeared in Ayotzinapa, um, you know, narcos, police, police that work for narcos. It's so sad. There's this, there's this, it's like a little tiny tent city and they have these all around. And it's uh, somewhere down Reforma near, near the Golden Angel. Mm -hmm. And it's just a protest, a remembrance of all these kids, and it has their age, 18, 19, 20 years old, you know, and I see this and, and all these other things, and aside from, like, the cool lettering, you can't help but just, like, you know, it's touching, it, it's, it's also their letters, their something that's out there, this is uh, their message and how it works. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of sadness and, and um, kind of makes you look at things in a different perspective. Aha! So we're almost done. Um, in the time I hadn't painted, 
Okay. Every time I'd go to Mexico, I just started taking pictures and, um, and not, I started taking pictures of a lot of churches mm -hmm. because I really love the art inside of it. Um, and that got really boring. And so they kind of morphed into, there's so many homeless people everywhere. And so I saw this dude, this was 2010 in this, and this wiped out message, whatever it was, and I was just like, wow. And most of the time, a lot of the, the homeless people, and they're passed out. Mm -hmm. either, either they're just living there, or a lot of times, like this is in the middle of the day, a lot of times, and people, they're really into huffing um, volatile chemicals, glue or mm -hmm. something like that, and you'll see that in the centro or whatever, you see people and they're always like this or they're just kind of out of it. I yeah. see this all the time. Okay. Well, until you notice it, you don't see it. But when you notice it, you're like, wow, wow. So who knows why this guy's here. But this, these next two photos are curious because this was 2010 and then I went back, I kept going back and then I'm like there again in 2014 and the message is still there, wiped away and there's another guy on the other side. Hmm. Um, so if I ever printed it, it would be like a diptych. Mm -hmm. um, um, and last but not least, there's this guy in front of um, uh, a rotulo on, a, on, a, on one of those doors. And this is a pawn shop, Casa de Empeño is on a pawn shop. And I was just like, wow, that's, uh, did he pawn his life away or is he just not care? And it's just so curious because people just walk on by. And maybe it's that way in New York City mm -hmm. as much, but um, it's just so weird. I, I've done, I've taken maybe 30 or 40 of these. I have these. And I say I want to do a show of all these guys. I call them my tirados, which is kind of like thrown on the ground because they're just thrown on the ground and mm -hmm. people just kind of, they're just Bye. there like trash and people forget about them, you know. There's no, um, there's no welfare or food stamps mm -hmm. or any kind of soup kitchens or anything in Mexico. It's crazy. So that's kind of another thing I kind of notice. And um, well, so aside from the the lettering and everything, you see kind of see this and you know, you know. It's sort of a through line from your transition from painting into photography. You're yeah. still captured by um, the hand painted signs, certainly, but also that deeper almost political mm -hmm. level um, in Mexico and then and also here. Yeah, that's so weird, you know, I, I, I've taken a lot of pictures since I quit painting and, and it's, I just, I, I, I guess I'm a photographer, but I, I, it's so weird to say, yeah, I'm a photographer, because, I don't know, cameras are so good nowadays, everyone grabs a camera and they're a photographer. Wow. <laughs> and but, so, uh, um, do you have any images of the meat paintings that are outside, or we can, no, we can wait we have and to go look talk about them yeah. outside as well? Um, well, let's see, before we go outside and mm -hmm. speak with you in front of your work, oh, are wow. there any questions from the audience from Mario while we're in here? Mm -hmm. This becomes common. You almost don't even see the person. And it's what I see like in San Antonio, we're from Houston. And we haven't seen as many homeless people. And it's interesting that I see this image and it just has this emotional tug to you because the first thing you want to see is what's behind what was that um the lettering that was there before? And now it's like all of a sudden you see in the corner that person that you want to see fade away. And in the other one, it's the image, and the fading is, is the blanket person. So mm -hmm. I just see the similarities with the painting as well, that shot and, <laughs> and the faded um, image. So I, I really am compelled with actual photographs that we have there. Yeah, it's weird. Like, this is almost like, what's the message? It's kind of washed away, almost like this this guy's life in, in a sense, you know, but yeah, 
Yeah, it, I, I had never really thought about that. I just kind of saw it and then saw it again. What's just so weird is like this is four years four later. Four years later. And I'm like, they're still there. It's like the same cycle or they're spinning this societies or this part of it is just still spinning its wheels. It's just really sad to me, you know? Mm. Well, cool, thanks. Yeah, and I also have a lot of, there's a lot of images of, of people just cover themselves in blankets. It's on the side of a, of a bench or something in a park or whatever, and people just leave them alone. It's like they're little. So there's a lot of things like this that I, I've captured. Janelle? Mm -hmm. And then, like, also the qualities of, like, the text when you take it out of context. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's kind of, like, the relationship, like, is there, like, a relationship between that? Like, when you take the, the words, like, out of context and put it on this, like, really painterly background, like, is there a relationship between that or is it just mostly, like, composition? Um, a relationship? I'd say, I'd say it's like almost like, like my first drawings where there, are, there was always two things, kind of like, and it's like a, a push-pull or a tug or a balance or that's just kind of always how I've, I've always painted and, you know, I don't know why, I'm just, I'm just drawn to that kind of thing. And sometimes you see it naturally, maybe on the side of a, of a, a store or, or a, an old sign or something that's still there or not there. Um, it's kind of like... Um, you know, kind of metaphorically, it's like uh, the past or, or um, I used to paint pots when I was like 19 years old for these two architects and they had this business that painted old pots and they showed me and I got really good at making stuff like look old and I, I don't want it to be that but like, yeah, there's kind of a wash away and a solid and I guess, yeah, kind of like time passing. And, but I, I don't want to make like my paintings look like old pots, you know. <laughs> They're definitely painterly and less, you know, like a, like a Rothko's kind of fluffy or Agnes Martin is like, you know, they're very kind of quiet things. But yeah, they're, they're related in that they're different too, you know. Yeah. I think we can take one more question and then we'll head up upstairs. Hey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was kind of shocked because um, in 1974, a bunch of artists whined and cried because they couldn't have shown at the museum. And the museum gave them the show. So I said, oh, crap, we have to do show. So they literally got tortillas, labels, signs, in front of the car, and a few things that they did. Mm -hmm. The surfaces, the, the meaning or hidden meanings. Um, are you trying to recreate the signs for the view? No, no, no. You know, um, not really. It's it's more like it's the lettering is is like a tradition, like the rotulistas. They're a tradition of signs and lettering, and I wanted to show different examples. Some of them are tighter. Some of them are looser. But that's their message, whatever the word is. They, that's the purpose they serve. So, um, no, not really. Um, there's something about it that I, that I think, and you can think about it as a painter, but you kind of have to go through it. So like I said, you know, the last, I haven't painted in eight or nine years, so I kind of started back where I left off. But I say I want to like get to the point to where it's still kind of the same with these bullseyes and the paint but without something more of a, more just not even letters or things. I say that, but I have to go through that first, you know. So yeah, I kind of want to make things my own. Like that todo cambia, I, I, I had seen that phrase somewhere. Um, 
just completely different. I was like, oh, that's, that'll be good for, the, for the, these other series. And so I just kind of made the sign myself. But, you know, you could see the same words anywhere or the same kind of sign, whether it's like tortillas, carnitas, and it would be a different style every time. So it's just kind of a tradition of lettering and sign painting, you know. Well, thank you, Mario. Yeah. For joining me in conversation. <laughs> we can all go upstairs if you have any more questions for Mario. You'll be there to answer them for a little while. <laughs> thank you.